All right, hello grade eights and welcome to lesson 12.4. Solve problems using organized lists and that's found on page 414 of your textbooks. And the goal, strangely, oddly enough, is to use an organized list to solve a problem. All right, so let's take a look here. All right, here's the question. Karina wants to buy a drink and a snack on the way to her next class. She knows that she has five coins in her locker but she cannot remember whether they are quarters, dimes, or loonies. Depending on what the coins are, she may not be able to buy both a drink and a snack. What is the probability that Karina will be able to buy only one item? Now, instead of actually going to, uh, to her locker and count it, she's going to make a list. So here's the problem. Here's the problem. Karina has five coins. She has loonies, dimes, and or quarters. She doesn't know, though. There may be more than one of some type of coins. There may be none of some type of coins. If the total value of the coin is at least $2, but less than $4, Karina will be able to buy only one item. Again, this could be a lot quicker if she just goes through a locker and counts it, but she would rather make a list. Here's the plan. Karina decides to write all the possible combinations of coins in an organized list. This will help her see what combinations have at least a value of $2 but less than $4 and takes a lot more time than going to her locker to count the coins. But I digress. Let's carry out the plan, shall we? Alright, so Karina checks off all the combinations with a total value of at least $2 but less than $4. The probability of being uh, uh, to buy only one item is 8 21. So there's 21 in this list right here. Okay, with the coins that she thinks she has. She has 21 possible outcomes. And it's nicely organized. So that's the point of an organized list. Start with the loonies, largest denomination. She might have five loonies. She may. She knows she has five coins, but she doesn't know what kind. So she might have five. All right, here's your option. Uh, here's the. Uh, here is your outcome here, total value of five dollars, and so far, so on and so forth. Four loonies, one quarter, there's your value. Four loonies, one dime, there's your value. Remember, what we started out with was she had five coins. Didn't know which one it was, and here is your option. Now notice the check marks. Notice the check marks. Three fifty to two dollars. All right, so Karina checks off the combinations with a total value of at least $2, but less than $4. And that, of all of these, is 821. 8 over 21. Okay? So this is what would be favorable right here. Less than $4, more than $2. All right? So Karina sees a pattern in the table, so she feels confident that she did not miss or repeat any combinations. We'll go, on, we'll go back and review all of the uh, review all of the uh, outcomes. Okay, it's basically the four steps of problem solving is what it's what we're looking at here. Okay, so uh, of everything, her favorable response would be between three fifty and two dollars. She only has five coins, and these are all the possible combinations. All right. So, this is what we're looking for. Okay, and we'll go back to the question review again. What is the probability that Karina will be able to buy only one item? So, the probability of only being able to buy one item is 8 out of 21. All right, to buy one item. Okay, and again, here's your organized list just to review. All of your options are covered here. All the possible outcomes are here. Here's your summary, total value, and you start with the highest to the lowest. Okay? How you organize it is up to you, but this is you this is using an organized list. Alright? Good? Everybody's good? Well done. Thank you for watching.